All right, today we're really going to talk about the derivative. This is kind of the the big concept that everything we've talked about so far has been sort of leading to this as the big concept, the derivative. It's basically the same as the instantaneous rate of change that we talked about last time. Remember that measures how fast something or other is changing at a particular moment, not over some duration of time, but at some instant, how fast is the thing changing right then. The definition, I will remind you, was this. Um, at the point A, the definition is f prime of A, that's the instantaneous rate of change at the point A, is lim h goes to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And in a typical problem, if you're trying to work this out by hand, you will be given a value of the a, and I'll ask you them like, find the instantaneous rate of change uh, at four. Then you plug four in for this a, and then you also plug things in for the function. I'll tell you what the function is, and you find the limit, and so on. This is the rate of change at the point a. All right, what we're gonna talk about today is a very slight variation. Really, it's not a variation at all on uh, of uh, mathematically speaking, but it's a different way of thinking about this formula here. And it is thinking of this f prime as its own function. So this f prime is a new function. What I mean by that is you could plug in different values for a, right? Like last time we did examples where we used certain value for a. If you want to, you could plug a different value for a, and the answer is a number each time. And each different a you plug in, you get a different number for the answer. That means you can think of this f prime by itself as a function, and it is called the derivative. All right, it's the same. This word derivative is the same as, uh, it means the same as instantaneous rate of change. Although usually when I say instantaneous rate of change, the connotation is that I'm talking about a specific moment and what is the, the speed or the rate at that specific moment. When I say the word derivative, the connotation is more like I'm talking about a new function. You start with an original function f, which describes something, and then you can, from there, create another function f prime, which is a derivative. It describes how fast the original something is changing. All right, so I'm gonna write another formula for the derivative, but this is just the same formula. The only difference is I'm gonna write x here to emphasize the fact that this f prime is now a new function, and it also has values. Whatever x you plug in, you get a value for f prime of x. And so I'm just going to write the same thing, only I'm using x instead of a. It's really the same. All right, this right here is the definition of the derivative. I'll put it in a box. You should, I mean, you should memorize this, although I already told you to memorize this, so it's, it's the same, just with x's in there instead of a's. All right, this is the derivative. It is a function which describes the rate of change of f. So let me just write that. The meaning of this derivative function, f prime of x tells the rate of change of f of x. That's the meaning of this new function, f prime of x. What this is useful for in the real world, actually, this is useful for many, many things, all kinds of different things in different situations. I thought we're gonna do some computations with this in a moment, but I thought first, let's just, let me just shout out a bunch of different times, uh, applications, scenarios where this is useful for something. The classic example, which is like what I talked about uh, from the very beginning about rates of change. What if I have some function, I'll call it S of T. If S of T describes the position of a moving object over time, right? Then what does the derivative represent? Then S prime of T would represent, uh, so S represents a function which tells you the positions at every different time. S prime of T is a function which tells you not the position, but it tells you how fast the position is changing, which is to say, the velocity of the object or the speed of the object. So then S prime of T is 
the velocity. I'll say velocity because this thing, the derivative here, remember it represents the slope on the graph. It can be positive or negative, which is why I'm saying velocity rather than speed. The velocity can tell you not only the speed, but also like which direction, positive or negative. So then S prime of T is the velocity of that same object. All right. Does anybody ever care about this? Yes, obviously. Anybody who's doing any kind of physics or talking about motion of objects definitely cares about the derivative for this reason. The derivative represents the velocity. All right. Another totally different example. How about this? What if I have P of T is a function. Let's say P of T is the population let's say of the earth on day T. You know, every day the earth has a population. Uh, I suppose these days the population is increasing day to day. You know, some people die, but other people are born and uh, there's more people born than die every day. So P of T is the population of the earth, let's say on day T. Um, what does P prime of T represent? The derivative, the prime always means how fast is the original thing changing? So P prime of T in this case represents, this is the rate of change of population on day T, right? How fast the population is changing on each day. For, so for example, if I were to write very specifically something like P of five, this means the population on day five, right? I don't care how you count the days. Let's say sometime you just start counting populations by day. Um, P of five would represent the population on day five. The units of this would be people, right? That's the units of population of the earth. Um, I'm talking about people. I'm not talking about other creatures on the earth. That's what P of five means. What about P prime of five? This little prime makes a big difference. It means something completely different. P prime of five means how fast is the population changing? So this would mean um, the, uh, I'll just write that, how fast the population is changing on day five. That's the meaning of this five here. How fast the population is changing on day five. And the units for that would be people per day, right? Here's another completely different example from the world of uh, business. Let's say I'm making something and R of X, R is for revenue. This is a function which says R of X is the revenue I get from making, let's say X things. You know, I'm making a bunch of stuff. Let's say I'm making, uh, I'm making YouTube videos. I'm gonna be a YouTube star. Um, R of X is the revenue that I get from making X things. I make 50 videos, I get a certain amount of money. I make 100 videos, I get another certain amount of money. That's what this function uh, represents. True story, I actually do make YouTube videos. Um, in the real world, this this function is always zero. I don't I don't make any money uh, from my videos on YouTube because they're not popular enough. How is that? I don't know. Anyway, um, what does r prime of x represent in this case? This is a little bit different. I mean, conceptually a little bit different because there's no um, there's no mention of the time here. All right. So most the other examples we talked about were always about something changing over time. This is the revenue. It changes not over time, but it changes depending on how many things I'm making. All right. Then the derivative looks a little different. This, uh, I would say, uh, I'm going to go through a few iterations of this, but um, without thinking too hard about this, you can just say this is the rate of change of R of X, how much money I make when we change X by a little. All the other examples were um, change over time because the variable was time. So as time changes, how much does this other function change? This time, the uh, this variable is not time. It's just how many things I'm making. So the, the thing is, um, or what this represents is 
when I change the X a little bit, how does my revenue change? Actually, there's a word for this. Not everybody knows this phrase, but if you know some, some uh, economics, you've probably heard this term before. To say this in more simple language is something like if I increase X a little, how will R increase? This, there's a name for this. This is called the marginal revenue. Marginal, the word marginal in economics always has this kind of meaning to it. It means if I do just one more, how will that affect the revenue? This is called the marginal revenue. And um, you could, this is revenue, but you could also talk about the cost of building things. Um, if you have a function which describes the cost of making x things, then the derivative of that function would be the marginal cost. That is, if I decide to change and make a little bit more, how much will my cost change? Uh, and you could talk about marginal profits also. These things are important in, in business and economics. Basically, um, decision making from a business, um, if done properly, should be done according to the margins. They say you should think on the margins. If you're thinking about changing your mind, uh, make more stuff, make less stuff, um, you should do so according to the marginal profits. If profit is what you care about, you should do so according to the marginal profits. So the derivatives, um, for that reason, derivatives are super important in, in that type of uh, economic theories. I hope I've convinced you that the derivative is super useful in many different situations in the real world. Let's actually try to do some computations. I give you a function, you tell me what the derivative is. How about f of x, this is a simple example. What if f of x equals x squared? I would like you to, your job, find f prime of x. Now, your answer should be a function. So your answer is gonna have some x's in it uh, because it's supposed to be a function. All right, don't think too hard about this. I mean, uh, at this moment, you don't need to think about the meaning of uh, f prime of x. It's the rate of change of this. But we have a formula for this, right? And we should just plug into that formula and compute it. This is the formula, the definition of the derivative. Your first step should be to plug in for the f's. And like I said last time, this is often where things can get screwed up. Let's try and do it right. f of x plus h. It means you go to this formula here, f of x and you replace x by x plus h everywhere you see it. So instead of x here, it says x squared, I'm gonna write x plus h squared. And then minus f of x, f of x is x squared, mm -hmm. right? divided by h. Now we gotta simplify this, eventually take the limit. How do we simplify here? We gotta do the FOIL right there, x plus h, I'll do it over here. x plus h times x plus h. I got x squared on the front, hx in the middle, another hx on the outside, and then h squared on the end. Okay, so this I'm gonna fill in right where that is. Lim h goes to zero. Uh, would you mind if I add these together? hx plus hx is two hx. So this is x squared plus two, uh, I said hx, I wrote xh, don't matter, plus h squared on the end. And then I got minus x squared, this was from before, divided by h cancel. Hopefully some of this will cancel. I see x squared. I see minus x squared. They can straight up cancel. And then what's left has h's everywhere on the top. I'm going to factor h's on top. h. What's left is 2x plus h over h here. The h's cancel. And so I'm left with just lim h goes to 0. 2x plus h. Finally, we can plug the zero in for h here and we get our final answer. I'm just gonna write it over here. We get our final answer is 2x, isn't it? All right, 2x. Apparently, the derivative of x squared is 2x. That means if uh, x squared describes the original function, a parabola, what is a function which describes the slope at every point? I guess it's two times x. All right, one more example. All right, f of x is two x squared minus x plus one. Again, your job, find the derivative. 
find f prime of x. Let's do it. You begin with the definition. This one's going to be similar to the previous one, although quite a bit messier. We can handle it though, right? f of x plus h minus f of x. This is the definition divided by h. And now we begin by plugging in for the f. This can be the most difficult step. You have to plug in f here. So what that means, f of x plus h, it means I go up here and everywhere I see x, I replace it with x plus h. So first I got this limb here. All right. Um, first is 2, which is 2. All right. x squared becomes x plus h squared. Every x becomes x plus h. Minus x becomes x plus h, right? Make sure you get, put those uh, parentheses there, haters. Uh, plus 1 becomes, what do I do with plus 1? Well, just plus 1. You write the same stuff here, only you replace every x by x plus h. Well, there was no x here, so it's just going to stay the same. Okay, that was only this part, f of x plus h. Next, minus f of x. That's easy enough. I just write this again. Better put it in parentheses. 2x squared minus x plus 1. All right, that's the whole numerator divided by h. All right, let's continue to simplify. What can I do? I got to do the FOIL here, x plus h, the whole thing squared. It's the same FOIL that we did last time, actually. Would you mind if I, I can remember what it was. It was x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's because I'm a, I'm a FOIL master. Make sure you keep that still in parentheses. You're going to have to distribute this two across there. Don't, um, there's a lot of opportunity to, to screw this up. You got to be very diligent. All right, next, minus parentheses x plus h. I'll distribute the minus there. I get minus x minus h, right? Plus 1, okay? And then here, also distribute the minus. Minus 2x squared plus x minus 1, right? All of this over h. We are almost ready. You know, eventually I'm going to start canceling stuff out. Actually, can I cancel anything at this moment? I think I can. I got a minus x and a plus x. Those should cancel. I got a plus one and a minus one. Those should cancel, all right? Okay, this 2x squared doesn't cancel, uh, although I'm going to distribute the 2 here, and then it will cancel uh, after doing that. Distribute this to 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. All right, and then what's left over from before? Minus h minus 2x squared. All of that divided by h. Okay. Can we cancel anything now? Yeah, I think so. Cancel this and this. Uh, I guess that's it, actually. As we usually do, factor the H out on top. Factor the, eight out, factor the H out of the top. It looks, come on now. Factor the h out of the top. We remain. Uh, we get. We remain. 4x plus 2h minus 1. Right. Divided by h. And then we cancel the h's as we always do. We are left with lim h goes to zero. 4x plus 2h minus 1. And finally, the last step as always, we plug the limit in. Plug in 0 for h. I get 4x minus 1, and that's the answer. All right? Remember, you expect the answer. This is the derivative. You expect the answer to be a function. So there should be x's left over, and I, it can happen. Coincidentally, they all cancel out, but um, you should expect to see x's in the answer. That's the derivative. That's how we do it.